NASCAR is headed international in 2025. We have a decision on Austin Dillon's final appeal. SRX is back in the news for all the wrong reason. Plus, Corey Day's future in NASCAR is about to get more interesting. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Pretty eventful Monday morning for news. We have, of course, had a Saturday night race. We have the trucks on Sunday afternoon at Milwaukee. Lane Riggs picked up his first ever career win. Congrats to him. He dislocated his shoulder celebrating after the race when he stood up on top of his truck and was fist pumping. He never could have survived a summer at the Jersey Shore uh, clubbing with all of them. Uh, instead, he had to get down off the truck and his team had to help him pop his shoulder back into place. They were able to do that. They all celebrated together. Odd moment. Not sure we've ever seen that, but cool moment at the same time to see them all super excited to do uh, for him to have his arm back in working condition moving on to the actual news so that came out on monday to start off with nascar is going international for the first time in 67 years the cup series will race outside of the u.s borders when they head to mexico city next year on june 15th according to jordan bianchi from the athletic an announcement is expected on tuesday where ben kennedy and daniel suarez will be down in mexico city to announce this future race the xfinity series will race on uh saturday june 14th as well they of course will be racing at the uh Auto Circuit Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, which is where Formula One race is at. It's where the Xfinity Series raced at from 2005 until 2008 to much fanfare. Really cool uh, visuals from that race back then. The track raced really well with those old Xfinity cars, uh, too. So it'll be a fun thing for the Cup Series to head down to Mexico. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be concerned about this. Get your passports together. Truck haulers from Xfinity and Cup get that CW McCall convoy song up and blaring because they're going to have to go from the border down there themselves. I'm sure everybody's going to have an opinion on this. Some of them probably not germane. It's not germane to the situation. The goddamn Germans got nothing to do with it. The same way that some of the concerns that people have don't actually have anything to do with the um, actual race. Like every city, Mexico City is a lovely place. Are there areas you can go? Yes. Are there areas you shouldn't go? Absolutely. Just like every city. Keep your head on a swivel. Be alert at all times, and you'll have a great experience down there. And the track is in a decent spot, too. It's not actually that far from the airport. Uh, so if you want to make a quick exit, you'll be able to do that. But I think this is really cool for the Cup Series. Richmond will lose one of its dates, so there will not be two Richmond dates next year, which is, I know people are going to be upset about that, but it's like, you guys all hated Richmond. Then when they do take Richmond away, now you're like, oh, well, we why are you taking Richmond's date away? Richmond has had two dates since 1959. So 2025 will be the first time since then that it has not. 65 years, I guess. Yeah, 65 years. Crazy to have two dates that long. But NASCAR is headed down there. I'm interested to see how they're going to lay out that stadium section that wasn't previously used when the Xfinity Series went there. They essentially ran uh, the big you know, parabolica, big oval turn uh, back out onto the front stretch. Now Formula One races through the old baseball stadium, the stadium section, which is cool visually. I don't like the setup for Formula One if that's what NASCAR is going to do. I think it might be a little bit too tight for them. Formula E races through there as well, doesn't use the same configuration. So hopefully NASCAR uh, has an interesting configuration for them to use. Moving on to other news from Monday. Monday afternoon, we got the decision on Austin Dillon's final appeal, and to the surprise of, once again, absolutely no one, he did not win his appeal. This is what was said about Austin Dillon's final appeal. Quote, the data presented today from SMT and the IDAS system indicate that more likely than not, a rule violation did occur at Richmond Raceway on 8 24 by the number three RCR team on the last lap of the race. The decision of the National Motorsports final appeal officer is final and binding on all parties. So essentially what they're saying there is they looked at the SMT data, they looked at all data provided as well as, you know, visual uh, proof as well. And they determined that more likely than not, Austin Dillon did violate a rule here, which NASCAR said that he did violate. Now the appeals ban panel has backed up what NASCAR has said. So essentially the line has been drawn. You cannot wreck two people coming to uh, the checker flag to win a race. You can, if it was just Logano, and he just dumped Logano and goes on to win the race, I don't think we're having this conversation. It's the fact that he put 70 degrees of left turn into the wheel, uh, according to SMT data, to initiate contact with Denny Hamlin, which then right hooked him into the wall, which is a big hit for Denny. I think that's where NASCAR is drawing the line at uh, in terms of what you can and can't do. It's the old John Potter, you know, what constitutes pornography? Well, I'll let you know when I see it type of thing. Well, what constitutes getting your playoff eligibility stripped? We'll let you know when we see it. Because as much as we hound on NASCAR for not being consistent, it is one of those things where you're like, well, in certain situations, 
something might not be as egregious as it maybe appeared or maybe more egregious than what you were ever expecting. Did I ever expect to see Austin Dillon wreck two cars coming to the start finish line to win the race? No. And how do you plan for something like that? Because it hadn't happened yet. You can't just put in the rule book. Hey, if you wreck two cars, you don't get to keep, keep your playoff eligibility. So there has to be a uh, there's a line there and it's is it a moving line at times? Maybe it's a gray area. Definitely. But I think NASCAR in this situation made the right call. You have to, you know, uphold a sense of integrity in the championship. And if you're going to allow this type of behavior to go on, you lose all the credibility and integrity that you have in said championship. So I think they got it right here. Uh, Austin Dillon and RCR kind of just wasted their own time over the last two weeks about this. I get wanting to fight for it, right? Because uh, it puts you into the playoffs, which gets you probably two to three million dollars more uh, than you're going to get this season. But ultimately, you were just never going to win it with the card stacked against you uh, like this because it was pretty egregious. So now he'll have to go out and try to win at Darlington if he wants to participate in the playoffs this year. He, of course, does have two wins and two other NASCAR Crown Jewel races. Why not just add a third one this weekend at the Southern 500? Today's video is brought to you by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to DrivenSunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Great sunglasses. I am very partial to the Classic as well as the Camber. Neither of them are in my office right now. They are both downstairs because I wear them on a daily basis. So head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Code break hard at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Moving on to more news that came out on Monday morning. Superstar Racing Experience, the SRX series, which we thought was dead. We thought they had sold off all of its assets to the Skip Barber Racing Organization. Well, it turns out that that's not true. And now we find out that SRX is suing the Skip Barber Racing <laughs> uh, series. And I'll read you what was said today when they put out their press release. It says on March 13th, 2024, Anthony DeMonte executed an asset purchase agreement on behalf of DMS Apex Holding, Skip Barber Racing, to purchase the SRX series. The agreement stated that the parties would close the transaction on April 30th, 2024. The agreement also stated that the transaction would be private and neither party would announce a transaction without the prior consent of the other party. Contrary to that, and without Superstar's consent, Skip Barber Racing and DeMonte issued a press release falsely stating that they had acquired SRX. In fact, DeMonte and Skip Barber Racing have failed to pay any amount of the purchase price or otherwise fulfill their promise to close the transaction. Consequently, contrary to their false public statement, Skip Barber Racing did not purchase and does not own SRX or any of the series assets. Listen, the series that Paul Tracy put out of business, the series that could not get out of its own way, had a terrible sponsorship model, did not have a very good TV deal, was a fun experience overall. Great to have that on Thursday night. Super fun. Didn't maybe attract the superstar names that they wanted literally cannot get out of its own way. Even in purgatory, it still has no idea if it wants to die or if it wants to live. And now they're suing the Skip Barber Racing Series. Don Hawk uh, had a big write-up on Twitter. And I'll be honest, I think I'm, I might just be tired of Don Hawk at this point, so I didn't read all of it. But he didn't take any of the blame. He blamed everything on Skip Barber, which it sounds like it was Skip Barber's fault here. But, man, SRX just... <laughs> Feel like it's always something with them. They can't get out of their own way. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that lawsuit now. And finally, moving on to the last bit of news from Monday. Dirt Tracker on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you want to consume his content at is a great source of dirt racing news, rumors, silly season, uh, all of the above. And on Monday morning, he posted an exclusive saying that Corey Day will be making his NASCAR Truck Series debut this season for Spire Motorsports in that number seven truck. Of course, we know that Connor Zilich will be making select starts in that seven truck to close out the year here. But now it sounds like Corey Day will also be making at least a start in that truck uh, before the season is over and he mentioned like four possible races on the, uh, the schedule that he could be uh, making his appearance at Martinsville and Homestead were on there uh, as well as maybe Bristol can't remember off the top of my head regardless go check out his content I don't want to you know repeat it verbatim here but that would be massive for Corey Day of course he only has two races on pavement um, a cars or no not even a car store a late model stock race at Hickory which he won the uh, second race of that night and then he started the Arca race at Salem a few weeks ago and was probably slated for a p2 finish before getting caught up in an, uh, his own accident cleared himself off a of turn two, make make contact with lavar scott and sent around and tody brininger kind of came in and absolutely plowed him if it wasn't for that he probably could have you know salvaged his car and gotten back out on track but up until that point he looked really impressive especially for a guy that made his first ever start on or second ever start on pavement rather of course the haters are like well not that impressive if he wrecks 
You're right. It's not impressive. A rookie quarterback ever comes in, throws two interceptions, but it goes on to be a really good quarterback. Everybody will always remember those two interceptions he threw in his first ever game as a rookie. Yeah. Morons. It's totally fine. He looked impressive. He has all the skill set. He has great car control. He just picked up a hundred thousand dollar win this past weekend at the Gold Cup. Corey Day is very much um, headed down the path of making that full switch over to pavement racing. Uh, he has Kyle Larson, you know, backing him, pushing him. Jeff Gordon, Rick Hendrick, Chad Knauss. Everybody is heavily invested in this kid's future. And now it sounds like we're going to get to see him in the truck series. I reached out to a few people. We'll see if we hear back on where he'll actually be making that truck start at. But for now, it's good news for Corey Day. It's good news for everybody that likes to see just raw talent, raw car control ability behind the wheel. Corey Day has all of the above. So let me know in the comments what you think about NASCAR going international. Uh, Austin Dillon losing his final appeal. SRX suing the Skip Bar Racing Series. Corey Day's future. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.